Very nice dolly sprint. I think that's a 4.2. There's not too many of these around now. Well, wow, that's nice. I'd love to know what the story is with that. This looks great, solid in all the important bits, like on the bulkhead around here, because this bit here is steel. Well, morning all. Welcome to the old classic car channel, and what a difference a day makes. Yesterday, it was low cloud, horizontal rain, and then a little bit of hail later on. But today, it is a very different scene. Everything is pretty well frozen up. Such are the winters here in good old Great Britain. The old MX-5, we're going to have to defrost that one. We're going to head off to the uh, Combermere meeting, the old Piggery Cafe meeting. Cars and Caffeine at Combermere, it's called. If you go onto Facebook to find out the dates, it usually falls on the first Sunday of the month. And we always try and support it whenever we can. But yeah, today there's going to be a bit of prep work. Mrs OCC is going to take this one, so we'll have to defrost this one. The standard, we're not taking this one today. As you can see, it's looking a little bit chilly. I had this one running yesterday. But yeah, look how cold that is, wow. I've not checked the thermometer yet, but it's certainly a chilly start to the day. And like I say, very, very different to yesterday. Yesterday it was raining, and then we had a bit of hail later on in the day, just for a bit of added excitement, an extra frisson of excitement. Is it minus five? Is it? Minus five, is it? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. it's not too bad, is it? Uh, yeah, so I left the battery on charge on this one because that was a little bit down. It does need a bit of a boost every now and again. I think the battery's probably not the strongest, but it does the job most of the time. There's just a little drip there. I'm not talking about you there, Hal. <laughs> yeah, that is one very cold looking standard, but fortunately the Renault is under cover, so at least we won't have to scrape the ice off that one. So please go and connect up the battery and prime up the fuel, young man. I know you know the score on this one, so can you see what you're doing? I've got a light here, hang on. I'm sure. Does that help at all? Sometimes it's the wrong way, okay. How about that? I mean, I could see it before. Yeah. So you're going you're gonna to pump up the fuel. Should be plenty of fuel in it. Fingers crossed. I've never had this out in the really cold weather before. It's just a bit less churning. It has done on occasion. <laughs> I think it'll be alright to be honest. But no, if you bring the spanner out, we'll just pop that in the car. I don't want it disappearing en route. I want it disappearing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, right. I'll tell you, I'll put the uh, the uh, bonnet down. Oof, nearly. A bit more. Oh, she's a little reluctant this morning. Will the, will the choke come on anymore? No, yeah, that's it. I don't really blame her for not really wanting to come out this morning, not at least until it's warmed up a little bit, because it's, yeah, it's certainly, yeah, it's a bit nippy, but. Like I've said on many other occasions, you don't really know your old car until you use them in all different weathers, whether it was driving, the Dodge pickup in the fog just a couple of weekends ago.
There's usually a bit of shuffling involved in getting out of here. <laughs> Even the grey Fergie is looking a little frosty. It's a frosty Fergie today. I think the sun will soon burn that off. Even this time of year, it's strong enough to defrost things fairly quickly. Right, let's get this gate open. Ooh, chilly. Oops, it's frozen stuck. There we go. Trusty brick. Yeah, see it's defrosted already here, so it shouldn't be too long. Maybe the MX-5 will actually defrost before we go. Everything in order, sir? Yeah, yeah jolly good. <laughs> Splendid. Well, we click the fast forward button and here we are outside the old Piggery Cafe and as usual we are one of the first here. The VW beat us by just a couple of minutes and this time we are parked over this side of the car park right next to the cafe here at Combermere and what a, what a wonderful day it is and it doesn't even feel that cold now. Everything's defrosting and dripping so that will make life a little bit easier when we come to drive home. No defrosting required then. What a great location for a Classic car gathering and wonderful weather too. There's something big just flying down the field over there. A bit too far away, but yeah. yeah still a bit of frostiness on the back, but I don't think it'll take long for that to disappear. My youthful assistant will be doing a video for his car traction channel, of course. Apologies for the shadows, but it is still quite early in the morning. I can hear something, I can hear a downshift. So what could that be? Something's pulling in. Probably the first of the Porsches for the day. As always, there's a real mix of classic cars, sports cars, supercars and more at this particular meet. So there's a real, real variety. Some of the events we go to is purely classic cars, classic and vintage, and some like this one. Caters for really any enthusiast-owned car which gives it a real sort of unique flavour to this particular gathering and with the weather looking as wonderful as this we are hopeful for an excellent turnout today. Yeah, these two look great together, both pale blue and of course both rear engined as well so there's that in common as well. We just heard the uh, V-dub firing up and it sounded so similar to our little Renault of course they've just got really short stubby exhaust poked out the back if we have a quick look under the back of the Renault, because of course the engine in the VW is just behind that hatch there. And on the Renault, it is behind this much louvered bonnet. And the exhaust is just there. And there's a little silencer that goes across the back here. Not much and the though. exhaust pokes out down there. So yeah, they do actually sound really, really similar, these two. At first glance, you'd assume that is the fuel filler, but no, regulars to the channel will know, as I pointed out before, that is actually the top-up for the coolant. That's where, that's where you put your antifreeze. And the petrol, oddly, 
goes in there. So I'm sure that's caught out many a garage service attendant when the four CVs were first launched in the late 1940s. Seems a bit of an odd way of doing things because you could so easily just pull up to a petrol station and chuck in a bit of fuel in there before realising that you're actually filling up the radiator with petrol. So you could so easily that's spill a, fuel over the hot engine. Yeah, or when you're topping up using the correct filler, yeah. yes, you can pour you can pour fuel straight over, over the distributor. Battery, yeah. yeah, over the battery and the distributor. So that's a bit of a bit of an odd choice, <laughs> I think. Need to make one of these shields. Yeah, I need to make yet another shield. Don't I that was a bit of heat shielding that I made up to try and cure some cutting out that we were having trouble with and it seems to be a lot better now. Last time we had it out they got the engine up to full temperature but the float chamber of the carburetor was lovely and cool unlike the exhaust manifold directly below it so that appears to work. It may not be the prettiest heat shield ever made but the idea was just to make it work. Yeah. Ah, two yellow MX-5s. Or maybe not. Oh, there's the local. There's the local Pontiac. Theatre Bath. We usually get two or three of those here. The rear engine classic. Here we've got the VTEC Mini. Bit of classic Triumph action now. The brown Dolomite heads a green Triumph stag. Very nice Dolly Sprint, 16 valve. Lovely car, quite a late example on the W, followed by an S registered V8 stag. Stunning Triumph TR250, which is essentially the American spec version of the UK market TR5, minus fuel injection I think. If I was going to get a TR5, I think it's one of these I'd actually go for. I'd much rather carburetors than the Lucas PI system. are pouring in another beautiful dolly sprint wowzers replica ac cobra sounding very purposeful indeed fantastic v8 soundtrack what a great car to drive on a morning like this got an austin healy sprite pursued by a porsche 914 Such an unusual car they are, and a mighty Mercedes AMG. This is a Ferrari, this is a 
mighty rolling in that one. There's that cracking E39 5 Series M5 BMW that we saw at the last meeting here at Combermere. Really sharp looking car in a fantastic shade of blue. Very, very nice indeed. And a Series 3 XJ. Wow, I think that's a 4.2. There's a super early VW convertible, Cabriolet rather. Proper Carmen convertible. And again, another rear engine car. Oh, look at this beauty on the old Dunlop wheels. Car park filling up nicely now. Now what do we have heading up the road here? Look at that, what is that? What a magnificent car that is. Fantastic TVR Tasmin. Obviously, this is the old classic car channel, so we will be prioritising the older cars today while also trying to feature just a selection of some of the later cars that are here as well, just to give a real flavour of what this meeting's all about. It's a lovely blue TVR Griffith there. Next, 308 Jaguar, one of the V8 Jaguars. <laughs> Porsche Carrera S. Lots of lots of rear engine cars here today. Got a Chevrolet, Porsche, Porsche, and all sorts. And look at that, another wonderful vintage car here representing the older cars and that's really great to see that here. I'll have to definitely have a closer look at these two a little bit later on. That's a 1914 Sunbeam according to the plaque on the running board. A thunderous bellow of a TVR. In fact, four TVRs. TR6, that's a beautiful example 
Wow, that's nice. Good morning, sir. Um, As there's a slight lull in arrivals, let's go and have a look at those two magnificent, really early cars that arrived just a few moments ago. Parked up over here, enjoying the sunshine. Are they both sunbeams? I've got a feeling they might be. Yeah, sunbeam. What a beautiful car that is. <laughs> What a treat to see some proper early cars here. That's fantastic, isn't it? Wooden wheels, very similar to those that we had on our 24 Dodge. Much missed vintage car at OCCHQ. We might have to remedy that one day. I could just see another Triumph Stag arriving. Beautiful maroon example. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? Let's have a look at the information sheet. 1913, this one. Look at that hooter. There's information sheet built, 1913. Yeah, I was just looking at that, yeah. Oh. It is, isn't it? Oh. Beautiful seating. The old leather work there. I'm sure we'll be happy to know when they turn off, they make the... Do they? Like oh, the just, just like the Dodge, they make like a sort of yeah. breathing in when you switch them off. Yeah, that's a real Bobby Dazzler. And if that wasn't enough, one... So what year is that? 13. So it's just about post-Edwardian. And the other one over here is a, is a young whippersnapper. This one is 1914. So it's only, a, a, it's only 110 years old, this one. So this is the, the young whippersnapper. Yeah, it's beauty that, isn't it? Look, and again, wonderfully commodious seating arrangements. Commodious. Yeah, very commodious. No front, no front brakes. No front brakes on this sort of thing. These veteran cars, the little badges and plaques you get everywhere. Yeah, the detailing is lovely, isn't it? Look at this, a calor meter, not like a motor meter. No, a calor meter. so nice, isn't it? Yeah, no front brakes on these, just really hefty kingpins there. Leaf spring suspension fore and aft. Yeah, they are, aren't they? That's beauty, isn't it? That's probably one of my favourite bits about it. Yeah. Again, super comfy seating. You've got the advance and retard and the hand throttle, I'm guessing, in the middle of the steering wheel there. Most people will not have a clue how to drive this. No. So that's, a real, that's a real treat to see that here today. In fact, there are quite a few cars here today that we've not seen before. That is fantastic. <coughs> Just look at that lovely old leather. Yeah, I like the Yeah, I just love that. What a perfect car for a perfect morning like this. Lovely crisp morning, it's not actually that cold. Yeah, that is just a beauty. And let's just have another closer look at this slightly larger Sunbeam that's also here today. Again, no brakes on the front end. Just like so many of their contemporary cars, those do the Dodge we had, that didn't have any brakes on the back, just really hefty brakes on the... Didn't have any brakes on the front, rather. But it did on the back. Yeah, what a great old car that is. Got a can on the running board. Probably would have had a, a Pratt's or Shell Motor Spirit can on there back in the old days, over 110 years ago. But yeah, what a treat 
to see these two fantastic sunbeams here today and hopefully this will encourage more people to bring out their really early cars to this meeting because it is a classic vintage and modern sports and enthusiast car meeting so there's a bit of everything here and it'd be great to see a few more oldies making it here especially when the weather warms up a little bit Oh, certainly filling up nicely now. What else will turn up today? I can just see an early Fiesta parking way down there, so we'll have a walk down there a little bit later. XJ's getting a wipe down. Morning, sir. Yeah, we're good. Good. Well, it's all right, isn't it? It's good. You're organised. You're a bit organised. I'm bringing a cloth and so what's in there. Well, just water. Oh, just yeah. just giving it a rinse down. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad actually. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's good to sit out and about. <laughs> seen you before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, that crew the other week, wasn't it? Oh, uh, That's it, yeah. How we get? No, was it there when there was no bacon? Yes, yes, yeah, there was no bacon, was there? That was a, I hope they got it fixed the next week. Yeah, that was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have the M5, the E39 BMW M5. And that great little Austin Healy Sprite, the Mark II, I think. Healy Sprite on an F plate. It could be a Mark III actually because it's got the wind up windows. You obviously had the frog eye sprites to begin with. And then they brought out this shape which was shared pretty much with the MG Midget, but I think those early rebodied sprites also had didn't have the wind up windows, so I think we're probably looking at a Mark III here. I'm fairly sure about that. Square wheel arches still. And have a Cobra replica over here, a thunderous V8 bellow as it came in before. Looks like a bit of a hoot on a day like this. That'll certainly wake you up if you weren't awake already. Let's work our way down here and have a look at that V8 Jaguar that we saw pulling in before, an X308. This is the, yep, the V8 powered cars, very similar to the X300, the six cylinder cars that came before quite a few differences especially to the running gear of course that's quite nice to see one of those we used to have an xjr in that shape also on an r plate and that's a much missed car as well at occ hq mm, okay right let's see if we can find something interesting ah yes here's that fiesta that i saw driving in just spotted it in the distance parking it so what's this a mark three fiesta i think we bought one of those many years ago, we paid £60 for it I think. That tells you how good it was, but it was on the road. But yeah, there's not too many of these around now. Rot's done for most of these I think. It's got the XR2 wheels I suspect. Otherwise looks pretty standard. It's a Lotus just driving in up there. The BMW behind it, so there's cars still pouring in. A lot of modern stuff down here, so I don't think we'll spend too long down here. We'll just have a oh, we've got a Honda S2000, so that's all right. We'll let that one in. Nice hard top on it as well. Oh, yeah. Really neat little cars there. A sea of grey down here, so we'll skip past that. So we're not going to waste any kilobytes on that one. Let's go up here, Mighty Mustang, we see this one at Crew Heritage quite often, the organiser of the Crew Heritage meet runs that particular car. Got an E36 BMW, a 3 Series Beamer, modern Beamer, and this glorious Stag, complete with hardtop. A very handsome looking car, I do like these with a hardtop on. I think they're really, really, really sleek. And a Lotus Elise. Fiat 124 Spider. These were based on the contemporary MX-5s, I believe. There's that glorious Stag. Beamer. It's a diesel. <clears throat> Got a Smart 4.4. It's a bit different. Don't see those all that often now. Got a groovy little car. Let's carry on up here. Like I said before, we try and show a bit of everything at these meets, but we will always prioritise the older, the slightly older cars because that's what the channel is all about but I do try and feature as many of the cars here as we can and there's that beautiful green TR6 we saw pulling in just a few moments ago centre lock wheels on it which look really really great 
Yeah, that's a lovely car, that is. It's got Lucas P100 lamps, more often than not you'd see these, or P700 rather. More often than not you'd see these on slightly earlier cars, usually in the 1950s, like XKs, 120s, that kind of thing. But yeah, lovely. Lovely car. Slightly later seats, bit of extra comfort and safety thanks to these head restraints. Got a walnut dash. That's obviously an upgrade compared to what it would have had originally. But yeah, it's a beautifully turned out car. I even like Triumph mats. <laughs> Harley's also very, very keen. Let's go and get his opinion. Let's go and get his take on this lovely Triumph. Do you like that, do you? Are you a fan? The is incredible. Do you approve? I do approve, yeah. It's got a walnut dash. Yeah, I like the walnut dash, actually. No I do like noisy the Aston. Dash. Yeah. It looks yeah. cool, though. I like, yeah, I like the steering wheel as well. I like steering wheels that aren't just like flat. Yeah, like it's got a slight doubles. dish yeah. to them. Yeah. It's, it's hard to explain, really, but mm. yeah. 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 So I've always thought that Triumph interiors are kind of a bit plain sometimes. Sometimes the wood is one, the wood is quite flat usually in these, yeah, like in the Spitfires and things. Super, super nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a real, real Bobby Dazzler. <laughs> All right, let's carry on along here while Harley works his way that way. We will work our way up the row in this direction. Many Porsches. There's always a great support from the Porsche clubs for this particular meeting. That's that little Lotus Europa, one of the, the later incarnations of the Lotus Europa, and that's a very rare car actually. And the Bubble Arch Escort Mexico, looking pretty fruity on those very chunky mini light wheels. A very, very cool car indeed. But how about this, the Dolly Sprint? I always have a slight inkling that maybe I should buy one of these one day. 16 valve, quite an advanced car for the day. And talking of classic Triumphs, look at this. A Triumph Herald, 1360 no less, on an F plate. So that'll have the 1296cc uh, of Triumph's finest under that tip forward bonnet. Really practical car, very, very practical first. Classic perhaps for someone there. Mm, it's great to see that one. I don't think we've seen that one here before. Yeah, quite a few Triumphs here today. Stags, TR250, now the Triumph Herald, and what else will turn up? So let's carry on along this row and that glorious Triumph TR250. That's a great looking car, that is a very usable car. Big straight six, two and a half litres. I'm pretty sure, like I said before, I think these were all on carburetors, the US spec cars. This has been converted to right hand drive. Carburetors, this one, being American, yeah. You know, I was saying before, that's what I'd be going for if I was going to buy one of these. I'm not keen on the idea of fuel injection. Maybe I'm a bit of a Luddite, but. Um, no, you're not, because <laughs> I had one at. Um, did you? A fuel injection caught catch fire in, in southern France. Oh, did you? It's one of the fuel pipes. Oh, so, blimey. We think. Oh, right. It right. didn't do a lot of damage, but it was just enough mm. to, to be transported out. Because the US spec cars were all on carbs, weren't they? Yes. I think, yeah. Right. Well, right. this has got SUs on not Zenith. Has it? Right, right. So, uh, double or triple? Right, right. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I do like these. Oh, you've got a pair of them, have you? have six as well. Have you? With carbs on. I'm just oh, right. Yes. The thing is, I'm sure with a bit of tweaking, you can get the power up to the same as the fuel injected cars anyway, or higher. The, um, the, the TR6, mm. it's, been, it's been to um, Jigsaw Racing. Oh, is it? <laughs> it's, it's got, uh, got a curve on it, a 150 mm. brake horse. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, they always strike me as being a lot more user friendly being on carburetors yeah. rather than. And the other ones, that, that one's also had a new chassis fitted to it. That's what oh, it is. <laughs> body works crap, but you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've got a new chassis and all the underpinnings are wow. spot on. No, it's great, this is, I love this. And I've just changed the drive shafts on this. Oh. I've gone to CVs, not the uh, UJs. How have you? Oh, right. Well, that's lovely, isn't it? That one's just done. Yeah. And I've only just bought those wheels as well. Have you? <laughs> have to give them a good clean after today, won't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I live on a farm. It's no. Oh. As soon as I go down the lane. Yeah, it's proper used. It's. I'm, I'm not a polisher. I'm no, no, no. That's great. No, no. <laughs> no, I can. I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, have a quick peek under there. Yeah, proper user. This one. Look at that. 
Black. Oh, what the, what the inner wings and everything you mean? Oh, oh right, it's something to do with the heat. Oh, was it? Oh, right. right. So I don't know. It's actually it. quite easy to get at everything, isn't it? Yeah, the accessibility is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, twin issues. Right. I put a servo for the clutch because it was a bit heavy. For the clutch? Oh, right. Servo oh. for the clutch. Wow. wow. This one was particularly heavy. Was it? Right. I did try put a new pressure plate on, but it didn't make a lot of difference. <laughs> oh, there's a very noisy Mustang I can see over there. Yeah. But no, this, no, this is lovely. I used to have a 2.5 in my Spitfire. Yeah. That, was, that was entertaining. But oh, there's a very, very noisy Mustang. No, that's... Uh, that's great. So it's actually quite tight here, isn't it? Yes, that's. You've got to be careful what which air clean. Oh, right, right. Let's see. Parking to go there. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Right, so let's carry on along here. Fresh batteries fitted. The Porsche 914. We saw this one here last month. Very smart little car, that one. And it's distant cousin there, the calm and converted VW. Another beautiful Porsche, I didn't see this one coming in. It must have been while I was walking around down below. And oh, look at this. This Ford pickup, what an incredible little truck that is. That is brilliant. I don't remember seeing that before anywhere. Left hand drive, wonder where that's coming from. It's actually really small for an American, presumably an American Ford pickup. It's no bigger than like a Marina or something like that. In fact, it's a very similar colour to a marina pickup that a friend of mine used to have. What's this done? I don't know. It's like a, it says Tonka on the back. <laughs> it's, it's like a Ford what? It's like, like it's or sort of a miniature. It's a Ford, actually. Well, it says Ford, doesn't it? I'm kind of thinking, is it like a smaller pickup that's been made up to look like a mini Ford? But I don't know. I don't know. From a distance, I thought it was like a Datsun or a Toyota or something. Yeah, because it's smaller. Yeah. No, that's a really groovy little pickup, that. I really like the look of that. That's cool. Now, from the end here, we've got the Mercury. I to get my youthful assistant to remind me what it is we're looking at here. We have seen this one here once or twice before, and it sounds phenomenal. Former drag racing car, if memory serves, and it's been sort of converted back to road use. Yeah, what a great mix of cars here today. And here is that lovely little Triumph Herald Saloon, the 1360. So this has got the later evolution of the engine that made its debut in the Standard 8, just like the one we've got sat at home. Originally 803cc, but this is 1296 and it was enlarged yet further for the Triumph 1500 and the, Spit the Spitfire 1500s as well. So that engine had a really good innings, decades in fact, of use. What makes these quite unusual compared to most cars of the 1960s is it's got the separate chassis still. That's something of course you would have had on pre-war cars and just after the war, but by the late 40s many manufacturers were switching to monocoque construction like the Morris Minor and cars like that. Cars like the Austin Devon persisted and the summer set after that with separate chassis by the late 50s separate chassis were seen as a little bit old hat but Triumph did that with the Herald and that enabled them to fairly cheaply make the estate version, the van version, the courier van, the convertible and so on and then they shoehorned the straight six in and modified the bonnet a bit and then it became the Vitesse and then the chassis was used as a basis for that of the Spitfire and the GT6 and the Bond, of course. Yeah. So the difference between the Spitfire is this, on the Spitfire it doesn't have outriggers. These have outriggers that come out and then run along behind. Those sill panels are just screwed on. There's nothing structural about those at all. Whereas on the Spitfire the sills are structural. And they also have outriggers that stick out from the back of the... So the main bit of the chassis finishes there and then you've got outriggers that stick out either side under the boot floor and they can rot away. Spitfires don't have those but the Heralds do. So you always have to have a good poke around the underside of a Herald or a Vitesse if you're going to buy one. But yeah, it's a great little car, isn't it? Great turnout. Yeah, there's a huge turnout here today. It's, it's just really cool. That yeah, that Mustang yeah, sounds cool. phenomenal, doesn't it? Yes, that's a really amazing car. Yeah. Here it is. This is a glorious Mustang. We've not seen this one for a year or two. But it sounds absolutely, yes, 
This sounds absolutely epic. This is, sounds, it sounds like nothing else. <laughs> it's just an incredible car. This I is. I think this is probably been the car I've today. Yeah. I don't know what's not, been done to it. No, not for the shy and retiring. Certainly this I don't one. I know what's been done to it. It must have cost. And, uh, eye yeah, the neighbours, the neighbours would certainly know if you were bringing this one out of a Sunday morning like today. But yeah, what a what, car! That's an amazing car. That is. Got a Porsche Turbo just parking up next to Yoldi Herald. We'll try and avoid this big puddle over here. So let's go around here. <laughs> We've got a TVR Chimera. <laughs> yes. Let's carry on down here. Still cars arriving, I think. Yeah, what a great turnout. A bit of everything, but it's what a treat to see these beautiful 1913 and 1914 Sunbeams. That is probably, those two are the, probably the highlight of this particular meet so far for me. They're just a, a real joy. I've never seen these anywhere before here or anywhere else. So I don't know where they live, how far they've come today. But yeah. And here is that lovely TR250 that we were looking under the bonnet of just a few moments ago. Yeah, cars are still coming in. I can see the local Triumph TR3 age down there, the midnight blue one. Got an Aston here. Super smooth Aston Martin Vantage. Have to work out where to park that because we are starting to run out of space a little bit. And these two fantastic Alpines, a matching pair of Alpines. Again, in that lovely shade of blue. The mighty Kawasaki Z1000. Four cylinders. Wow double overhead cam in a motorcycle again apologies for the shadows huge disc brake even on the back a uh, cup of sustenance has arrived so that'll I'll keep me going for a little bit longer but I've just down here I've just spotted another triumph that we haven't seen yet I don't often come around here so we've got a VX220, the Vauxhall VX220. It's quite an unusual sight and a fantastic shade of yellow. Of course we approve of that because we like yellow. I like these doors as well. I could do with this building in the garden. I could do with something like that. If anyone's got a spare building they don't need, drop me a note in the comments. We've got a Toyota MR2, the Mark III version, I think. A little mid-engine car. But over here... The Triumph TR5, we were just looking at the TR250 over the way and this is the UK market equivalent the Triumph TR5 complete with the Lucas PI fuel injection system as shared with the big Triumph 2.5 PI saloons and the later TR6 of course Very very nice indeed, I do like these a lot Probably twice the price now of a comparable TR4, the four cylinder car, which looks very, very similar to these. But the soundtrack of the straight six is just a joy to behold. Yeah, beautiful car. And again, it's got the center lock wheels on it. Oops, it's a bit, still a bit icy underfoot, nearly went then. I always thought these are a sharp looking car, the E46 era of the BMW 3 Series here in the two-door coupe form. Is it an M3? I don't know. I'm not sure if it is. Let's have a look. Has it got many, many exhaust pipes? Now this is a 330Ci, so it's got the 3.0-litre straight six. I'm sure that sounds phenomenal. We used to have a 2.8-litre BMW Z3 and that would sound very similar to this, I'm sure. It's a 330 this one. I just want to go and have a look at this Mini down here. Not even gonna this this Merc van looks like it means business. <laughs> Here's the Mini that I spotted in the distance. Wow, that's nice. What a beautiful dark green. That's lovely that is, isn't it? 
That's a very cool little mini. Looks to be in great condition. That stag over there is the one I saw when I was on my bus. Oh, you saw that one driving past, didn't you? That stag, yeah. What a super little mini. Not sure we've seen this one before, have we? Don't think so. Yeah, that's yeah, no, great, isn't it? Bagels hitting the mark this morning. Normally, Dad would be at this meet, but he is slightly laid up at the moment. He's had a knee operation, so he's just uh, letting his bionic knee settle down. So hopefully, he'll get to one of these two of these shows within a few weeks or so. So I thought I'll just have a closer look at this XJ Series 3 for his benefit. He's had a couple of these, he had an XJ6 4.2 Series 3 many years ago and a little bit later a XJ12 HE, same shape as this in like a very dark maroon colour. So he's got a bit of a thing for Jaguars, he's now got an X350, one of the aluminium bodied XJs, the XJ6, but I know he's still got a sweet spot, or a soft spot rather for the old Series 3s, and they are a very handsome motor car indeed. If you've seen the videos we've done at the Crew Heritage Centre, you might well recognise this particular car. It's been there before. It belongs to the gentleman that also brings his uh, 1980s Ford Granada Saloon from time to time. And they're a very handsome car indeed, these. I've had Series 1 XJs and the later shape XJR that I mentioned before but I've never had a Series 3 the XJ, the classic XJ came out in 1968 there's a beautiful looking car this is sort of mid 1980s, that's a private plate I think on there and these Series 3's with the revised roof line, higher roof line many many differences under the skin soldiered on for many many years the six cylinder xj series 3 was replaced by the xj40 the slightly squarer new shape xj in the late 1980s although the v12 version of the series 3 like we're looking at here soldiered on i think until about 1992 until such time as the xj40 shape v12 was readied for production but these are a very very handsome looking car indeed Behind the Aston, another glorious Triumph Stag. Beautiful bright yellow Stag Mark II with the alloy wheels and the stainless sill covers. So that's a beautiful looking and beautiful sounding car. What a fantastic soundtrack. Twin pipes, stainless steel exhaust. Very, very nice indeed. There's that lovely brown Triumph Dolomite Sprint, a beautiful car. Really late example on a W plate. And that looks like it's been really well restored. What a great looking car that is. Now what colour is that? Is it russet brown perhaps? Something like that? It's a bit of maintenance going on on the Sunbeam over there. Maybe a wheel change or just a bit of an adjustment perhaps. But yeah. These are really handsome looking cars, I think. As was so often the case with British Leyland in the 70s. Really interesting design, the engine. Same with the Stag, really. But not really fully developed before going on sale. And they did have some reliability issues, cooling issues, that kind of thing. Which really blighted these cars back in the day. I think most of the problems that they had back in the 1970s have been ironed out by now. And any car that survived who to 2024 has no doubt had any little niggles under the bonnet long since sorted modern radiators and that kind of thing go a long way to make these cars a lot more reliable than perhaps they were back in the day but this is just a beauty I'm not sure if you can see in there but yeah really really tasty looking car that is good morning. good morning so what do we think it looks blue or brown. Which would you get? Which I would you have? Blue, but something about this car just looks right. Yeah. I don't know why, but something about mm. it when I just look at it, it just looks 
Oh, yeah. Perfectly yeah. right, you know. Yeah, smart, isn't it? It just looks like exactly how mm -hmm. it should be. Sporting saloon for the yeah. 1970s family man or woman, of course. Yeah, I like, I, I like that yellow one on Webbers. That was a cool one. Oh, yes, I yes, I do. I don't, but these wouldn't have been mm -hmm. on Webbers, though, would they? No, not originally, no, no. no. But yeah, yeah, I do like the even yeah, the just cool. ones. And then we got the stag alongside, the three litre V8 Triumph Zone engine, of course. This is nice, isn't it? And again, what a beautiful car for a morning like this. Very, very swish indeed. A huge roll bar was a standard fitment in these cars, which must have given the body a lot of torsional stiffness and you've got a, a nominal rear seat there so it's a, a practical car a very practical classic to be fair, that's not even that bad. Well, there's a bit of leg room in there isn't there it's not too bad this one's an auto some of them are manuals the other ones are manuals it's just mm, right well yeah great gt yeah, that is i'm sure triumph had the likes of the mercedes sl in its sights when designing these cars back in the whenever it was that does look really nice. Mm. You don't see many in this green. No. No, it's a nice shade, isn't it? No, it's a handsome car. Oh. Yeah. I love about this, mate. You've got a Porsche GT yeah, then and a 1914 such, for, such variety, isn't it? And you've got these lovely little TVRs as well. TVRs. Yeah, yeah, there's a nice... Good yeah, there's a lot of TVRs here as well. So yeah, a bit of everything. Doesn't that just here look today. lovely in silver and the dark green as well? Yeah, really yeah, it's nice cool. Certainly cool. And funnily enough, there's two of these TVR Tuscans in the same red. Is there? Oh, I've, yeah, I've never yeah. seen another one with just a solid colour, but just over there, there's another. Yeah, one. there's a matching pair, isn't there? No. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Bonnie Herald? I'm really taken though by this little Ford pickup from the early 1970s. I'd love to know what the story is with that. I've never seen anything like it before. It's just so small. And it looks super duper original, lovely original paint on here. Nippon. Hmm. So it has got Japanese glass in it. Something fruity driving in, something modern. But yeah, so it's got Japanese glass. I just can't help thinking that this is of some sort of Japanese origin, perhaps badged up as a Ford. But the scale of it really does look, like I said before, like a Datsun or a Toyota or something like that. And seeing the Japanese windscreen, let's have a look at the quarter light glass as well. Yeah, Nippon, I don't know if you can see that. Nippon safety glass. Are there any other clues? It says Ford on the steering wheel. Just trying to see if there are any clues in there as to. But yeah, what an interesting thing, Tonka. So it's badged up as a Ford Courier. So that's interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting little truck. There's that mad VTEC powered Mini. 
another Triumph TR try not to get flattened by the flat six Porsche cars coming and going and there goes the Westfield There's a smell of bacon wafting over the air. It's very difficult to resist, but resist I must. Focus on the job in hand. But yeah, this is great, this TR250. Apparently it lives on a farm. So polishing it regularly is probably a bit of a thankless task. But it's a great looking car, this is. And Westfield sounded good. It did, yeah, it did. What do we have here? A classic imp. It's a great thing about these more informal meets. Cars just come and go throughout the morning. No having to arrive by a certain time, no having to stay until a certain time in the evening. And that is what's making these particular breakfast, car and coffee type meets so popular now, I think. And the Porsche leaves. Engines running on the Great War era Sunbeam. Huge flywheel there. Sounds nice. Mm. There's a Bosch Magneto providing the sparks down there. There goes the maroon stag with hardtop. Burbly, burbly, burbly. Very, very swish. And the stunning 911. This imp looks very purposeful, debumpered, huge wheels, are they revolutions? They look like it. Let's have a look. Yep. Yeah. Great little car that is, and again, rear engine. So many rear engine cars here today, some old, some newish. Yeah, a real mix, but I don't think I've ever seen so many rear engine cars in one place before. One of the two cars are just starting to drift away now. So I'll keep an eye out for some of the more interesting ones as they disappear homewards. Maybe back home for a roast meal perhaps. Hi. What a cracking car that is. Not one, but two Great War era sunbeams. What a treat to see them, hopefully they'll come again. You can see the huge flywheel spinning away underneath there. It sounds so smooth as well. And hot on its heel is the other fantastic Sunbeam. What a great car that is. And again, hopefully we'll see this one again before too long at this and other meets.
There's that wonderful little pickup truck. Such a rarity that is. What a treat to see these real rarities out and about on this wintry morning. Yeah. Hats off to everyone who's brought out their old cars today, especially the older cars. So many of them are tucked away for the winter. So it's great that so many have turned up here today at the old Piggery Cafe. The XJ8 departs. Super smooth. Either a 3.2 or a 4 litre. Could be either. Classic Triumphs going.
Yeah, the car park's looking pretty empty now. Mrs. OCC is heading back to base. No wheel spin, no smoking of tyres. Yeah, and I think we will probably disappear ourselves very, very soon. But we just have one small job to do before we go. And a lovely old petrol pump, the old Beck meter petrol pump. I wonder when those needles last spun round delivering fuel. Could do with a bit of an oily rag just to help preserve it. Clearly, this is a little bit later than nozzle, so it must have seen reasonably recent use would have been glazed at one time but it's great look at those lovely indicators there the old clock face type there's the Beck meter the badge there I wonder if it was originally BP there's like a shield shape you can just see there yeah just perfect anyway I think we will now head back homewards And take the Renault back. Hopefully Mrs. OCC has made it back home A-OK -okay in the little MX-5. It's been a beautiful morning. The weather is just fantastic. It's just a perfect morning out in the lovely old car like the 4CV and all those other fantastic cars that we saw here today at the old Piggery Cafe. So thanks to the people that run the cafe for opening up for us today. It's a fantastic turnout and hopefully there'll be many more this year. If you're new to the old classic car channel, Please think about subscribing, give it a like, that kind of thing. Leave a comment, let me know in the comments which car or cars you particularly liked at this event here today at the beginning of March 2024. So thanks so much for watching. Many, many more videos along very, very soon. Well, fortified by a hefty-sized bacon sandwich, I thought what better place to come on a lovely sunny afternoon than this than Slape Airfield. This is the first time I've been down here this year. Well, I say we. I'm on my own, but uh, yeah, first time visit for 2024, I think. And with a bit of luck, we'll see something old here. There's always something going on here down at Slape, so it seemed like a great opportunity, especially as the Mazda was all warmed up after its little outing to the old Piggery Cafe this morning. So what better place to come than this and come and have a look, see what's in. Look at that float plane over there, wow. What an incredible machine, I've never ever seen that here, not on any of the previous visits down to Slape. So already, I've not even left the car. And there's already something interesting here, this was an RAF airfield during the Second World War. And now, it's a slightly muddy in places, but bustling aer aerodrome airfield are for military aircraft, aerodromes are for civilian. Yeah, I think I'll have to look up the registration of that one and find out a little bit more about that because that looks really interesting.
see one of those. Yeah. I might have one of those. Yeah. They... I, 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 I looked into the history of them. And it's the longest... Follow um,
What do we see over here? But a Series 3 Land Rover. I was just about to leave. I saw this J Reg on 1970 or 1971. Series 3 just parked over here, long wheelbase pickup. How cool is that? I'm sure my youthful assistant would approve of this one. In perfect condition. Somehow an immaculate Land Rover just doesn't seem right somehow, but this. This looks great, solid in all the important bits, like on the bulkhead around here, because this bit here is steel, where the doors bolt on, all the other panels are aluminium. But yeah, this one looks very bonny, original plates as well, we like original plates, but yeah, that looks great. Chassis looks pretty good as well, chassis on these things can get a little bit frilly. So this one's probably been done and restored underneath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Great old Landy. There we go. Just about peering through the windows there. Yeah. What a useful vehicle that is. I was only extolling the virtues of classic pickup trucks a week or so back when Harley failed to proceed on his bicycle and had a puncture. I had to go and retrieve him in the Dodge but this would have done the job equally well what a great old truck that is I could certainly see myself with something like this one day <laughs> that's great anyway the sun is starting to get Ooh, there's a biplane just taking off the sun is just starting to get a little bit lower in the sky so I think it's time to point the little Mazda's nose northwards and head back home so thanks very much for watching